Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rants from Come On Now, the podcast. This is your boy, Rudy Rodriguez Shomont here, and I'm ready to drop another rant. Before I jump in, let me say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting this channel, helping it grow. We are now at 2,057 subscribers. We have had a nice jump, as you can see, over the last month. And we are trying to get this thing going and keep growing and growing and growing with more and more content on a day-by-day -day basis. Please do help us get up to over 2,100 subscribers today. That is my goal, <clears throat> is that we see that jump over 2,100 subscribers before the day is done. It is now 7.19 p.m. I got five hours, just under five hours. But I know we can get there. Let's jump right in and make sure you subscribe, like, share, and all that. But let's jump in on the topic of the day, the rant of the day. Don Staley. Don Staley. One of those committee members who decided that Caitlin Clark wasn't good enough to be on the Olympic team. Don Staley, <clears throat> the coach of South Carolina, who lost to Caitlin Clark two years ago in the Final Four and just beat her Caitlin Clark in the national championship this year. The Dawn Staley, who's been at South Carolina for 16 years and just recently received an award for perseverance, the Jimmy V perseverance award. I don't know what that was for. I really don't. If it's about 2024, I don't know what she persevered again with because her team is loaded and her teams are always loaded. And she's been 16 years at South Carolina where they've had great, great teams. I truly thought that the perseverance award would be for something that would be that year. But if it's a lifetime achievement award, yeah, she deserves it. All that said, Dawn Staley was asked who she thought the rookie of the year was. And who do you think Dawn Staley said it was? I don't know. Let's take a wild guess, but I'll let you see for yourself. Why the hell not? Oh, these are the two rookies of the year. It's It's... Even some some saying it looks more like uh, Angel Reese right now. If you had to evaluate it from your perspective, who who do you think is having that season? You know. Oh, so you're gonna try to make, you know, put me in the controversy, right? No, you. I mean, they they both are having great years. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. If I had to pick a, if I had to pick a, a rookie of the year at this time. Like um, today, you had to pick, today, you know? It's, it's Angel. Yeah, she's Not a like, doubt. I mean, I mean, what she's been able to do with right. the double-doubles. It's a streak. But, but, but listen, the season <laughs> is halfway through. Yeah. And Caitlin is coming. She, uh, it looks like... <laughs> All right, you heard it there. <laughs> you heard it there. It is Angel Reese for sure. No, no doubt about it. It is Angel Reese. That is what... Don Staley said, and because Don Staley said it, it must be true. Fuck, no, it's not true. Don Staley went and used the most basic freaking reference that's been on television now for the last three weeks, and it's a double-double streak that is fluffed in puff. Puffed in fluff. Padded. Padded like boobs. It's a BBL. That was that streak. It was lifted. Are you kidding me, Don Staley? A point guard? A point guard? Sitting here and saying that the 6'3 power forward who shoots 40% from the field and has missed literally 60% of her two-point shots, which are layups, because she has a double-double streak? Let's see. Let's look at the, Look, I have credited Angel Reese for her double-double streak. Yes, I have. But I also know that it's fluffed and puff. She's had some great games in that streak. That streak was not a... That streak was very, very, very puffed up on missing shots to yourself and getting your shot blocked back to yourself. That happened over and over and over again. I recently talked to a state championship basketball coach today who's won seven state titles in the state of Florida. You can look him up. Look up the coach that's won seven state championships in the state of Florida. I spoke to him today and I because he doesn't really watch women's basketball. And he asked me about this streak and I explained to him how a few of these things happen. He said, wait, they're getting rebounds for the shot being blocked back into their hands. 
Yeah, they are. They get rebounds for shooting the ball into the bottom of the rim and then catching their own shot. Yeah, they are. Let's take a look at this streak. The first game of the streak, she had eight offensive rebounds out of her 13 boards. The next game, she had 10 boards and five of them were offensive boards. The next game, she had 11 boards and six of them were offensive boards. The next game was legit, 11 defensive boards, two offensive boards. And the next game after that, 10 boards, four of them are offensive boards. The next game, legit, 11 defensive boards, three, three offensive boards for 14. Next game after that, she had 13 rebounds with five offensive boards. Legit. Then she had 18 rebounds. That's a lot of rebounds, 10 defensive boards, but she had eight offensive boards. Neither, either way, she had a double. She would have had a double double. Then she had 16, 13, and three. Then she had 11 with six defensive and five offensive boards. Then 16 rebounds with 11 defensive boards and five. Then the next one was 19. That's a lot of freaking boards, two, 14 defensive boards, five offensive. But then, you know, she had that 10 rebound game with seven offensive boards, and four of those were shots back to herself. Four. That was against Seattle. That was her 27 and 10 game where she got her last rebound with like two minutes and change to go and then immediately turned the ball over after she had a shot blocked back into her hands. Then she had 14. Then she had 13. Then she went for five, 10 rebounds again, five and five, of which, remember, she got two offensive boards in the fourth quarter off of a missed shot and off of a shot blocked back into her hands. That was the New York Liberty game where the puffery was going on on the rebounding end. And then she had 16 in the last game when the streak ended. Of those games, there's at least five of those games right there where they were puffed up by bogus numbers, by puffery, by fluffery, by all that shit that you say is padded. It's padded. I am not taking away from her season. She's having a really good year. I keep saying she far exceeds what I've expected from her. And I stick to that. And I still respect her game. I respect her hustle. I respect, I respect her grind. I respect her fight, her will, all those things. I do not respect her offensive skills. She has none. She has none. And the fact that Dawn still could get on here, that was on July 13th. What day did that streak end? What day did that streak end? That day, that streak ended on July 13th. I would hope to God that that interview took place before that embarrassment against the Liberty, where she's sprinting down the floor, begging for the ball down 14 with under 15 seconds to go in the game, and then begging for the ball on the wing with four seconds to go, and then pouting, walking up the floor like, mm -mm -mm. Take my ball and I'm going home. I'm mad because I didn't get to shoot the ball. And two games, but you know what? That exactly happened two games earlier against Atlanta where she did the exact same thing. So you, Don Staley, an old school basketball mind, an old school player, can sit there and watch that garbage and respect it and then come on here and use it and say, yeah, this double-double streak? My dear Don. Oh, my goodness. Can you be so obvious? Caitlin Clark, are you paying attention to Caitlin Clark? As of your interview, she had had five straight double-doubles with points and assists. Her team, since they started one and eight, has gone ten and six. So during that double double streak, do you care about wins and losses? They were six and ten during that streak in Chicago. In the last 16 games, Caitlin Clark is 10 and 6. They're winning. And they're winning a lot. In fact, yeah, one of their losses was to Chicago. They also beat them twice. But one of their losses was, was a bad loss to Chicago. They have a bad loss to Washington. You know what it happens. But let me tell you something. I can look, I'm looking at Chicago. I'm looking at the Chicago standings right here. They have lost one game by less than eight. By one game, they've lost one game by less than eight in the past 16 games. They won, They lost by 13, won by eight, lost by nine, lost by eight, lost by two, lost by eight, won by 11, won by one. That was over Indiana, that comeback. Lost by 12, lost by 8, won by 8, won by 4, lost by 13, lost 1 by 9, lost by 15, lost by 14. So they either win or they get their ass kicked. 
during that streak. They win or get their ass kicked. And Don Staley is going to sit here and tell you as a professional, as a former WNBA player and, and coach at South Carolina, that Angel Reese is the no doubt rookie of the year right now. Oh, no, she says, but it's only halfway through the season. Don, have you been watching? Caitlin Clark is top 20 in five categories. She has more points, assists, blocks, uh, even with steals, higher efficiency rating, less rebounds than, than Angel Reese. Shoots at a higher field goal percentage right now. Yet she shoots from 25 feet while Angel Reese can't make a damn layup. You've got to be kidding me, Don Staley. I expect better from people that are supposed to know basketball, but I keep it. I, I must be so damn naive because it's all the same crap. And then she says, and I chopped it off before she says, but she says, well, whoever makes the playoffs, but what if they both make the playoffs? They're both going to make the playoffs. They're the seven and the eight seed right now. So are you going to go by based on who finishes seventh and who finishes eighth? Because they're both going to finish ahead of Atlanta. I don't think anyone else is going to be able to come up and catch these, catch these teams. Maybe Chicago gets caught because Indiana has a much lighter schedule because they played a big chunk of their schedule against the badasses at the beginning of the year. They played New York four times already. They played Connecticut. They played multiple times. They played Seattle, I think, three times already. Like they they've played <clears throat> they've played them all already. I mean, they they've played a big chunk of their season already. I, I mean, come the hell on. Come the hell on. At this point, Indiana has played Connecticut, Connecticut. They've played Connecticut three times. They've played the Liberty four times. That's seven games against the, the, the two best teams in the league. They're one and six in those games. They've played the Aces once, twice already. They're 0 and 2. So they're 1 and 8 against the three, against the three best teams. I think Minnesota's and they just beat Minnesota, so that makes them two and nine. Seattle, they've played one, two, three times. They've lost all three times to Seattle. So they're two and twelve against the four top teams in the league. You see where their losses are. They have a loss to the twelve. I might be miscounting because they're eleven and fourteen right now. I know they've lost to the they lost to the Sparks early on. And they have uh da -da -da, Seattle one. Two, three, Connecticut, Connecticut, uh, Connecticut, uh, or whatever. The reality is they have a much thinner schedule the rest of the way. They play the Wings, the Mercury, the, the Dream, the Sky, the Wings, the Sparks, the Dream, the Wings, the Mystics. They have, like, uh, of their last, uh, their four, 11 and 14, of, last 17, last, of their last 15 games, they play one, two, three, four, five, six. They have six games with six six games against teams with winning records. Their schedule is thinner, but they're both probably going to make the playoffs. So we're going back to that Monica McNutt take. Whoever makes the playoffs, or whoever finishes with a better record, this is not an a team. This is not an a team award. This is an individual award based on what you do on the floor. Sure, could it help that your team does well? Absolutely, but people are these players are drafted to bad teams. Caitlin Clark was drafted to a really, really bad team that if you want to be honest with yourself, last year won 13 games. The year before, won five games. The year before that, won six games. The year before that, won six games. The year before that, won 13 games. The year before that, won six games. The year before, nine games. They have not even been a 500 team since 2016 as a franchise. This team has been in the gutter. She's turned the entire franchise around. Not to mention his balling. Has the first triple double by a rookie in WNBA history. And you're talking about a fluffery record, a, a fluffed up record. 
It just goes to show you that nothing changes. The more things change, the more things stay the same. It is not a surprise that Dawn Steady would take a dump on Caitlin Clark. Yeah, she wants to come at the end of that interview. I chopped that crap off. It's not really freaking important. Just talking about there's more to go in the season. Right now, the rookie of the year is Caitlin Clark, and you're right. It's not close because Caitlin Clark is the rookie of the year. It's not close. And if you have and if you watch those last two of those last three games with the Chicago Sky, and you walked away saying that you have any respect for what Angel Reese did on that court, begging for the basketball in games that were already over just so she could pump up a streak, then you should be ashamed of yourself. If you think that that's respectable, if you come away with respect for that, that's outrageous. That is, there's nothing respectable about that. Any person that plays hoops knows that ain't real. Anyone that plays hoops knows that, that shit ain't real. But we're gonna sit. But right now, Indiana has an eleven and fourteen record, and Chicago's nine and fourteen. So right now, Indiana's ahead of Chicago. Indiana's beating Chicago twice. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? Don Staley could have showed us that you really have ethics and integrity, and you showed us that you do not. Just like all the contemporaries of yours or colleagues or friends or whatever the hell you might want to call them over at ESPN who can't get their I mean can't get out of their own ways of saying how Angel Reese is the rookie of the year based on the fact that she has a higher plus minus and has a higher <coughs> I'm sorry, a higher plus minus has a higher uh P E R or, or or whatever other thing that was made up. To, by the way, that net efficiency rating that Carolyn Peck was talking about, I think it was, Caitlin Clark passed her. So did that change her opinion? I mean, come on now. This is like, this is just absolutely ridiculous. This is ridiculous. <laughs> but that's all I got for today. On this topic, Don Staley, you are just like, all the other shills who are trying to create a rivalry that truly truly doesn't exist and a rivalry that truly shouldn't exist because it's not a rivalry when one player is just that much better than the other. This is not LeBron versus Carmelo in 2003 or whatever it was, four, three. This isn't that. Four, I don't remember what year it was. This is, this is a, a, a player who is changing the history of the league changing the history of the league in comparison to one who just puffed up some statistics with a lot of missed layups Woo! that's a bit about it be sure to like subscribe and comment come on now